Thanks, everybody. Um, it's, uh, it's good to be out here. Uh, it's good to finally have this up on the screen. We came out, we brought our presentation, but we left our fonts. And so some of these are going to run off the screen a bit. Um, future links might not be legible or clickable. Um, we'll find out. It'll be an adventure. Um, yeah, so today we're going to talk to you a bit about what we've done with using AI to map at Facebook and how we've taken some of that technology and, and kind of packaged it up in a form that anyone can use uh, and, and made it publicly available. Um, and so a bit about myself, I help to build our rapid editor uh, and I work as an engineer on the, the, the team that supports our mappers tooling. And uh, Zach has done a lot of work on the tasking manager, on our internal tasking manager installation. Right, so before we get in there, um, we'll take a step back for a minute. You might be wondering where we use maps at Facebook, and it turns out we use them in a lot of places. So um, high quality maps are actually quite valuable to our users, and you'll see them across a whole bunch of places. You'll see them on search, commerce, events, um, basically anywhere that, that we need to display some you know, geospatial type data, something laid out on, on, um, on, on the land somewhere. And this happens a lot. Uh, in particular, we, we show three things. We'll show kind of uh, OSM as the base map, as the kind of background, and then we'll layer in application data on top of that. So we might have a set of uh, places data or a places page, and then we'll have individual pins on top of that, which might be other kind of not fully expanded areas. Um, so it's just one layer in kind of the full suite of data that we make available on the page. Um, let's see. And of course, as a product, um, we get a lot of reports in from users about things they might find in the product, and, and part of that being the map surface. So currently, we're getting about 600 reports daily uh, that are relevant from, uh, from our users. And as of August, we've had over the past, I think, a uh, year and a half or two years, about 190,000 um, full reports that we've gone through, reviewed, and categorized. Um, and Right, so the font strike again. So two things tend to happen. One, if it's a Facebook data issue, we'll fix it on the relevant, we'll, we'll contact the relevant product team and we'll fix it there with them. Two, um, if it's in OSM, we'll actually get that back into the community or we'll fix it ourselves. Um, um, right, and so here's an example where the fix was actually on the Facebook places page. Uh, the base map, the OSM data is correct. Uh, the, the Facebook product surface is incorrect, and so we worked with the internal team to get that fixed up. And then kind of some of the fixes we've done with the OSM, uh, with the OSM community, we've, uh, we've had about almost 400 reported issues that we, our team has actually gone back and just kind of fixed right away, uh, right away in the database. And we've also, um, Partner, uh, collaborated with Hot uh, Indonesia to fix about 15,000 various specific issues like names and, and certain tags uh, in Indonesia. And uh, we've also filed um, 16 map roulette challenges with you know, tens of thousands of features fixed um, as a result of that. So this is kind of one of the ways in which we're trying to improve uh, the quality of the map data for everybody. Okay, so kind of getting to the, so that's, that's how, how we do things, uh, kind of where you might see it on a product surface in Facebook, and now we get to kind of how we're getting, how, how we're contributing kind of proactively, right? So this is a bit, that was a bit about reactive as issues get reported. Um, now when we go more proactive, that's where we get into the AI and um, how we're actually bringing uh, road uh, data from satellite imagery in. Um, and so, so we call our project for uh, AI-assisted roads uh, Map with AI. So it's kind of mapping alongside uh, the AI models and, and being supported there. Um, and so this launched in July, and it was available in a number of countries, uh, uh, in um, Bangladesh, uh, Indonesia, Nigeria, Mexico. We've, we've since expanded out to many more countries. Um, and we actually have a place where you can file requests for new data coming in um, for, for other countries that might be relevant to what you are looking for. Um, and this is a splash page I'm gonna try to link out to. Nope. Um, we tab to it. Mm -hmm. This one. Right. So, so it's kind of a splash page that that we hope is useful for kind of explaining what it is that we're doing. So if you're ever 
you know, talking to anybody about what is this thing that Facebook said they were doing. Um, Mapwith.ai uh, is a useful page to know about. Um, you can kind of see the images that we have there. Oh, I don't have it. Oh, we're extending, so <sighs> drag it over that way. Yes. Hey. It's the same thing. Yeah. Cool. Right. Okay. Right, so this is a bit about what we do. Um, and from here, you can get into the rapid editor, and you can also see kind of a view of um, our predicted, our AI predictions kind of right here. So it's a good place to go to just check out what's available. Uh, not all current countries are currently available in this view, but they are all available once you're in rapid if you go to the area that you're interested in. Um, and I'd like, I'm gonna try and play this video up here, talk a bit about our work in Thailand. So much for that. So it's maybe yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can we get to the end of this? This is the end of it. Oh, right before that. Okay. This is kind of a summary here. Right, so <laughs> right, so we did we did a lot of work in Thailand over um, quite a while, and uh, you can see here there were kind of what happens is it kind of shows the uh, a measuring of community contributions that were in that area, and then as we went in, what you see is the red level kind of comes up, and it's not necessarily where a lot of the very populous areas are. It's kind of more spread out through the entire country, uh, and so you can see how we're kind of working in more rural areas and kind of filling in the entire the the full road grid. Uh, there. And so if you visit that on your own time and check it out, you'll probably have really good frame rate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a great video. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, we have to. Just have to move it again? You have to close out the video. Right. Yeah. Got it? Yeah, great. Should be at that. Okay. okay. We're back in business. So we also have. Um, some of the so so after Thailand we also began to work in Indonesia and um, we've kind of uh, so this is this is here kind of showing over time how we've worked on filling in the road network using the AI uh, assisted methods in Indonesia. Um, currently we're just over it's almost entirely com completed by the metric that we've got to measure. I think we're like 99.96 percent. Uh, so it's, it's really getting there. Kind of in. So what I'd like to do then is to kind of talk about the process uh, as it happens. Um, so this is the the, the overline pipeline, uh, or the over the overall pipeline, and uh, we take in. We've got the training data that we that we've generated. We have satellite imagery from Digital Globe, uh, and we have an ML model that we've trained over time. And with all these together, we generate a layer of road predictions, which is just raw pixel predictions. And I'll show some pictures of those in a moment. Uh, we take that, run it through a bunch of heuristics and post-process it into vector data that is actually suitable for, for making its way into the database. Um, and it's been cleaned up a little bit through, through some heuristics, like sh really short segments are, are taken out. And I'll show pictures of that also. Uh, and then finally, we do this uh, conflation where we merge in what's present currently in OSM with what we think ought to, like what the machine has found as the road network. And, and supply this as a baseline for, for working with. And that's kind of what RAPID is. And so I'm gonna get right there. And so from RAPID then you can, we can work directly uh, with the data in OSM. Um, so he, this here is um, a satellite image on the left and then the white is ro the road predictions on the, on the right hand side. And the, the yellow is kind of like a, a set of uh, building predictions also. Um, so kind of diving into that, so here again, it's just, just the rows. This is what the machine sees kind of on a pixel by pixel basis. 
Um, and we take that and we kind of have a high threshold, so anything that it's uncertain about, it's kind of like each pixel is a certainty level, and so anything that seems uncertain, we throw out. We wanna have a really high uh, bar of quality and avoid false positives. And then we also extract kind of where the middle of the road is. So we can say, you know, here's the middle of the road, it's a, we think it's about this wide, this is kind of what, 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 the, uh, what the road is there. Um, we kind of take those segments, we, we merge them, we connect them, we trim some out. Um, we go a little further and remove little islands of roads. So looking back between these, you can see the tiny like little hairs of roads have been taken out. And then this is what we've got that's the basis for converting into uh, vector data suitable for OSM, which we do here. So this is like a, like a debug format. Um, all the green and pink are um, roads that we have surfaced that we think are, are need, need doing. And the blue, um, the blue kind of stroked roads are uh, things that are already present. Um, right, so the world's very big and, and we've evolved our model over time and we, we've got one that works for, we think, the whole world and we're constantly improving it. And so here's an example of one kind of train that you might see and everything that's picked out is a potential road in that by the model. Um, here's an you know, a very different looking kind of terrain. Um, and this also picks out you know, the road networks that are, that are present there. And then, you know, yet again, um, very different, we kind of get them. So you can kind of get the, get the sense that this works in a variety of terrains um, and actually looks, you know, looks quite good based on what uh, we're seeing here anyway. Oh, here's the last one. Uh, any guesses as to which city this is? It's in the United States. It is Boston, all right, wow. Like that, yep. So I'm from the Boston office. Um, that's our the team location there. Yep. Okay. So kind of having it all here. So we've got the machine predictions, and um, and we want to make those useful. And uh, you you saw it just kind of that the big debug output where it has everything all at once. That's just that's just a lot to deal with at one time. And so that's why we built Rapid. Um, we we built Rapid in order to make it a lot simpler to uh, just get in there. And so here's the actual conflated data that we have in real time, um, where we pull from OSM, so the white's all OSM, and the magenta layer is the predictions that we've made that have been vectorized that are not yet in OSM. So it's just the things that aren't there, right? And, and we think this is a really neat, the, this is basically the heart of the thing that we've done there. Um, let's see if this works. This is, Another video, so I'm probably, probably hosed. But, oh, and it's of course not there. So we've got, it's um, oh, that's gonna work. Yay. Okay, so here we are kind of going through and drawing, drawing uh, some roads into an area. This is um, the purple border there is a, a TM task boundary. Um, this is if you were to go and go in and digitize by hand. Uh, we sped up the clock there. And in a moment, you'll see as Rapid comes in uh, and, and working over the same area and what it looks like when you've kind of got a set of uh, templates that are pre-digitized that you can, that you can uh, use as a basis. Right, so these are kind of here. They're drawn reasonably well. Um, you can select them and drop them in. Once they're in, you can just edit them as if they're any other thing. So you can take it in piecemeal and uh, make sure that it properly connects with the road network. Um, a lot of the roads you'll see came in and had a gray connecting dot. So they were already merged in with the existing waves. That's kind of the output of the real-time conflation that we've done there. Um, that little segment was removed. It didn't quite fit in. Um, you can kind of toggle, use IDs tools to toggle on and off. The, um, the rapid layer or the OSM layer. Um, and so it tends to work as a pretty good starting point. Uh, the, we find that the, the quality of the, the suggestions are, are, are pretty good when it comes to hand digitization. And also, the, um, since they show up in a, in a broad swath, it kind of draws your eye to where there are roads that you might not have spotted roads. And the models are getting quite good at you know, working around cloud cover or where there's dense foliage. Um, and bits like that. So it's, it's a very useful starting point. Let's see. We have to switch back. Okay, so we have to switch back. Uh, exit this so it doesn't play another video. And this one? Yes. Looks 
hopeful. Oh, this is a good one. All right, so I'm going to hand it off to Zach now for <laughs> his boxes. Yes. All right. <laughs> it's supposed to be a URL, but... It's probably clickable still. Uh, well, it might be clickable. Anyway, um, the URL is tasks-assisted.hotosm.org, which is what I'll be talking about. Um, so we partnered with Hot and DevSeed to, um, to launch this Assisted Mapping for Good Tasking Manager, which um, we also call it the Task Assisted. You may have heard it that way. Um, the, this Task Assisted Tasking Manager to, is a playground for all of these ML projects that we have going on. We have with Rapid and the uh, ML Enabler. Um, and so the big motivation is so that we can get uh, people on it, get projects created, and start getting feedback. Um, on both of those ML projects. Um, so this is it. Okay, cool. Um, <coughs> so computer assisted mapping has been something Facebook's been um, experimenting with um, for several years, and all that experimentation has given us a lot of really great feedback, um, both from our internal teams about the processes and also from the um, local communities. And so all of that feedback was um, kind of the influence behind Rapid and the task manager processes um, that we're talking about. Um, and we found a really big benefit with um, supplying uh, digitized roads as opposed to traditional um, manual vectorization projects. Uh, we saw, on average, two to two and a half times faster um, task completion, um, doing some A-B testing. Um, and so the TM paired with Rapid makes a really efficient um, process that, uh, without losing quality of data, which was very important to us, as you can see the issues panel. Um, and so we found that even with a strong local mapping team, um, that we can move much faster if all of the digit digitization was done um, beforehand and we needed to be done very quickly beforehand so that we can get spend more time on the ground um, with the local editors. For example, um, uh, the mouse. For example um, from a satellite, you can see there's a bridge, but you have no idea if a car could drive on it or. Uh, it's a pedestrian-only bridge, and so we can digitize that using tools like Rapid, but we need to get people on the ground, so efficient as possible process is needed. All right. Cool. We should remember. So, minutes. Yeah. So what we'd like to do after this bit is to kind of open it up for um, kind of showing off how the, the TM can be configured, the task-assisted variant of the TM can be uh, configured to use Rapid, and then to... Uh, show off some of the features that are available and see if we can, you know, if, if there are project managers in the audience, we'd love to sign, like we could get you set up to be able to create tasks assisted yeah. projects uh, if you're interested in using this technology. So we're gonna do kind of a hands-on demo session of um, doing this work. So if you've got laptops, yeah. we can do that. We can answer your questions while we're here um, about it. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, but before we do get into the, yeah. that hands-on bit, um, we kind of open up for a few minutes worth of questions before, yeah. Yes, in the red in the back. Th thank you. That's a really fascinating uh, demo. I, and in particular, I like that you um, that you're involving uh, local mapping communities to uh, to get an understanding of local, uh, I guess, local geography, local urban uh, 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 design uh, and and urban features and so on. Um, can, can you tell us a little bit more about what you learned about the shape of the world while, while doing that? So specifically the question, to what extent do you think ultimately you, you want to automate to, what, to, to the extent you can or, to, or conversely to what extent you will always want to have local communities involved in these kinds of activities? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I think... What, so what we've been finding is that by doing the like, automation of certain things, so in this case, look, we just got we just got roads, um, but it it serves as just a good starting point. But it does, it's not good enough to bring in uh, everything about it, right? Like road hierarchy is a weakness of this. Um, there are false positives. There are false negatives. You know, you get a few things wrong, um, and so it. it I think it would be great if we were able to have this be as useful as possible as a starting point. But I don't think it. There's any sense in kind of trying to do it all. Um, 
having folks who are actually uh, you know, building the map, building the community around the map, and uh, being able to bring the local knowledge on top of that is, is always something that's, that's great. So it's kind of, I, I kind of think of it as like a Photoshop for, for maps. It's like if you want to draw, you know, if you want to do the, the fire effect, you can do that, but you know, there's no need to, and that's not going to make or break what you've got there. It's just a useful tool. Hi. Um, yeah, pretty impressive stuff. Um, I, I'm, I have two questions. So uh, one is like, what was your training data set? So like, how can you decide? You said you have one model for the whole world, and then this morning I learned that the world looks really different in different places for machine learning. And the other thing, I saw this video where it said like, you know, whole Indonesia is lighting up with like, you applied this. What does it mean? What's the status right now? Does it mean it's the magenta lines? Or is it, do you have staff somewhere who is going with Rapid and now mapping all this? What's, what's the status? Sure. We can talk about the ML bit, but do you want to talk about the, the mapping team? And the... Sure. Okay. Do you want to do that? Oh, yeah. So for the ML piece, so initially we started with a, a hand curated data set that we generated ourselves. Um, and uh, more recently we've been experimenting with trying to um, see if we can use some of the data that's in OSM to be like a weekly supervised layer. So there's a blog post available about how we've explored that on uh, AI. Uh, there's an AI blog post from Facebook that's up and available that kind of goes into some depth about how we're doing uh, some weekly supervised learning based on you know, what's an OSM combined with the data sets we've generated ourselves. Can you remind me of your second question real quick? No, I mean, what's the status right now? Like, how many, is it in the magenta lines you have been generated? Or is it, do we have staff and people who are actually editing this now in Rapid into mm -hmm. OpenStreetMap? Okay, yeah, so we do have, um, our internal teams are now using Rapid, um, and then uh, well, also a lot of community team, um, projects have started, like there's a big project in the Philippines now using Rapid. Um, and so yes, internally our staff is now using Rapid, and so are um, other communities. Right, I guess the lines are after, so Rapid is again, it's like the baseline, right? So it provides a start, a jumping off point. So we've got people who are, you know, there's, there's teams of folks who are using this and then um, using that as a starting off point. So all the, the bits in the video are the actual things that have been added by people going through. Like we're not doing an automated, um, you know, like a, like a every blind step. push or anything yeah. like that. Every yeah. step has a human. Is that kind uh, of what you're asking? Or? Okay. okay. Hey, Chris and Zach, thank you, great presentation. Uh, my first question is about what is the resolution of imagery that you used and did you try it out different sources uh, to, to, to predict that your ML work works same as in on the digital globe imagery versus on maybe some other source. Uh, the second question is like, have you tried uh, ramping that up to identifying buildings or that's something that is not on the radar? To identifying buildings? 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 Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, I guess come talk to me after about the, the specifics of the data set, and I'll see if I can get you connected with the right people who can talk about that. So I built a lot of the, the front end for, the, for Rapid and the, the system that wrapped it up, but in much less into the ML side of that. Um, yeah, other areas would be great. Um, buildings would be a really cool place to expand into. So, yeah. Hey, guys. Um, I just had a quick question here. So right now, Rapid or the ML output is giving a default road classification of residential. Are there plans to enhance that and add predicted road classes, or where's that at? Yeah, that's another great question. So <laughs> you, the, the weak spot, right, is uh, road classification. So we've got things that are there. We, we use heuristics for that. It's not machine learning. Um, we take a best guess for when we find something's connecting to the road network at a place already. We try and figure out, based on a set of rules, what hierarchy level we'd assign it uh, already. But it's often wrong. Um, that would be another cool area to, to try and figure something out in. I mean, we've, we've tried to uh, mitigate that a bit by adding some hotkeys and some other shortcut features to Rapid so you can quickly switch, uh, like cycle through road hierarchy, pick things that are nearby. Um, but that would, be, that would be a really cool thing to do also. Yeah. So we're going to do, um, so b before we run to the end of the, end of the bit, uh, are there program managers, or project managers in here who would be interested in trying this out or, you know, using tasks assisted, uh, ML, I see one, maybe two, three. Right. Okay. So not a ton. Okay. <laughs> so we can follow up with you 
uh, in a bit, or um, so we, we could just, just go and do. You, know, you should give it a shot. So let's let's show how that works, and then um, also country requests. I think yeah. would be we a good can one. stay in field questions. Yeah. yeah, and then we can kind of go back we, into it. If that yeah, makes sense. come back to the questions in a minute. Um, so first, I want to talk about another awesome link. Um, so data requests. Um, so on our um, on Rapid's GitHub issues tab is the best place to request data. Um, and there's also a page in there about the current asks. Um, it's called country requests. The links would make more sense if yeah, so <laughs> this would make more sense if the links were there. Right. So if you're interested <laughs> in having the ML model apply yeah. on uh, any particular area um, and, and seeing how the results work out for you, uh, okay. get in touch. Let's and try. Let's see how this goes. That's not right. Okay. Yes. Right, so we've been working on kind of trying to package this up. So Rapid's available at um, mapwith.ai slash rapid, and that'll be on the last slide that we've got here, too. <laughs> no, it won't. Oh, no, it won't. <laughs> um, <sighs> These are countries where we, the model's rolled out to right now. Yeah. yeah. But, um, okay. yeah. You can also get to it from just map with AI and scrolling down, and you can go into Rapid or into the ML assisted, uh, ML enabled tasking manager version, which Zach is here going to kind of show us how to mark up a project. I think you're missing an S. Yes. Um, Come on. So that you can uh, use Rapid in your own projects if you'd like to. Don't let them save your password. Yes, please don't. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. If you've got your laptop, feel free to follow along. Yeah. Uh, following your, <coughs> oh, the call. oh, don't worry. Okay. So on the task assisted instance, um, project creation is all the same. Um, all you have to do additionally is go into the project settings, and you can now uh, restrict which Editors are available for each, uh, for both mapping and validation stages. And so we'll do JOSM and Rapid for validation, and just Rapid for mapping. Save, throw the project. Um, if anyone wants to go map a little in Kenya right now, you can. Yes, yeah, so this project's open project and available. Yeah. It's a good if you want to try Rapid, it's a good place to start. We set it up in an area where there's actually some data available. And then there we go. See, we got some detections here around these fields. Perfect. Right. Anyway. So yeah, no, so this is the, uh, the kind of interstitial here. So we're, we're trying to make sure that people who are actually using this tool are intent on kind of validating the data is correct and not just kind of blindly adding it, right? So we've, we've added a mode for exploring mode, which won't actually save to, to the database, but you yeah. can still go around and pull in roads and, and play with them. Um, but if you actually want to have it work, you'll need to, to log in uh, to OSM. Yeah. Uh, which mm -hmm. And we also have, uh, there's a rapid specific addition to the uh, ID walkthrough. So you can do just exploring and then. Yeah, yeah that'd be a good one to demo. Yeah. yeah, you want to pull up the walkthrough? So, and the help page? So, so question mark, we'll pull yeah. up the help? Or, yeah, help and help page. Up already. Yeah. Uh, we will skip to the fun bit. Yeah, so we've also added a, a walkthrough portion here. It kind of teaches about how to turn on and off the layer, how to pull features in. Slow down a sec. Oh, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. This is um, now built into ID. Um, we worked with the ID team um, a while ago to, to take some of the in-house validation that we had built out and uh, enhance ID with this, this idea that, you know, short ways might get flagged or Rhode Islands might get flagged within here. So there are more helpful validations on potentially, um, potentially low quality uh, data that's, that's being added. Um, and all this is present. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yep. 
So if you're looking to learn it yourself or you're trying to teach anyone about it, there's that video on Map with AI, <laughs> and there's the walkthrough here. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I guess we can go back to questions. Yeah, I don't see a lot of laptops out. Uh, people yeah. jumping in around doing the hands-on portion of this. So. I highly recommend mapping yeah. with Rapid. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very good. It's pretty Zach, uh, do you have? Do you want to present anything else, or should we go to the questions because we have like ten minutes left? Um, I'll show one more thing. Okay. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Ooh, bonus feature. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh no. This is a dot I put on a the period. end. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Let's go to. Yeah. So we have a roads data set, you know, and and you know, Rap is quite good at working with some data set and kind of overlaying it on the map and and making it available as you know kind of a jumping off point. And so another data set that's out there and is fantastic, you might know of, is Microsoft's buildings data set. Um, and so we, <laughs> we, we uh, this is an experimental version of Rapid that we have hosted here uh, during State of the Map. It's at map with AI slash at rapid dash SOTM 2019. Um, and it actually has support for a buildings layer. And so uh, here we've got the roads layer. You can toggle independently in the buildings layer. Um, ah, yes, good. Okay. Yeah. And it works just like how oh, adding the roads work. Yeah, this is the same idea. A features beautiful. available. And we do, uh, the, the real time conflation applies here too. So although all the buildings here might be in the data set, only the ones that aren't yet present are um, actually being kind of shown in uh, Magenta. All right, it's helpful. Okay. <laughs> so we can do questions. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Really cool stuff. Um, you showed this comparison of how long it takes uh, to map with a regular editor and then with uh, with Rapid. Do you also have? Um, did you make some tests in how long it takes to validate the data that was actually mapped? And I'm thinking especially of you know streets not being connected and the, the nodes just being like floating around a little bit. Thank yeah, you. I mean the mapping so the mapping demo we did was kind of just very quick, right? But the map the, the speed up when we quote those numbers, those are actually when someone's going in and you know connecting the road. It's not just you're not just adding them, it's actually going through and doing it. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of baked into there. We have a, a, a separate validation pass that we also do. Um, that we that I don't know any uh, numbers for offhand. Um, but if you want to follow up afterwards, I could try and sort more in. But it sounds like kind of what you're asking is, um, sure, it's easy to just say, here's some things, just throw them on. But actually doing it well is slower. So what's, you know, so that's the deal. And yeah, our, our, the quick little bit there doesn't go into that quite right. well enough. There were a few, if you saw it, there were a few bits where, you know, things were removed or extended or added, but it wasn't quite very thorough. So the numbers, when we say something like, you know, we see a 2x speed up, that's uh, from, you know, what we're seeing, and that's actually with a kind of higher quality bar that we're doing there. But like those, that two and a half times uh, faster, it's with the same quality. Like every task was mapped to the same standard. Um, and so validation didn't really take it any time longer. Yeah, right. Hold the quality bar, vary yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go ahead. Hello. There we go. Um, okay. Um, uh, very nice talk, and I really like the concept of assistant mapping. Um, but actually, it's regarding this point, since you already mentioned that at the output of the machine learning, you also got the uncertainty of either a road or a, a building. So have you ever considering merge such kind of uncertainties with the volunteers' experience? So um, because we are talking about assistant mapping, so you have to decide, you have to let the volunteer to decide to which extent they would like to see the machine learning results. So for some very experienced uh, volunteers, they probably would only like to see the a uh, really certain machine learning result and they would like to do the jobs, the other jobs. And for some beginners, they probably like to see all these results. And so I was uh, asking, would you uh, consider such kind of uh, functions to um, consider as well the volunteers' exper experience into this kind of presentation? 
don't think we yeah. consider that. Yes, yeah, so this is like if you had a slider bar or something yeah, for, you something know, like that, right? how much of the, the raw predictions do you want versus how much of the cleaned up predictions do you want? Yeah. Based on confidence. I think we, yeah, a bit the confidence there. I think we, we thought about that a bit. And what we did was err on the side of like a higher threshold and higher confidence in the rows that we're doing. So we just kind of, yeah, we kind of went into it both for the external version and our internal version with just starting with things that were really, that we're much more certain about. Um, okay. It seemed like the way to go. Uh, Okay. You know, I don't think we want to. Yeah, right, because if you lower that, you're still at risk for things that, like, that you might, yeah, I mean, right, you, you just start bringing more data, and then it's more about, like, uh, really hunting and, and picking out, you know, what's exactly wrong about it, um, rather than, you know, trying to validate that something that's there. And you might wind up with, like, a much more dense area where, um, where you're just throwing out a lot yes, of things there. Yes, I mean, there. Uh, Yes, I mean, for some very coarse areas, you only get the machine learning predictions. It's quite straightforward to know, okay, uh, there is only several streets, but for some very condensed areas, you, you sometimes get too much predictions, so it can be a kind of um, disadvantage for detailed mappings, because when volunteers come into these areas, too much uh, machine learning predictions pumps out somehow block their eyes to this uh, detail map. Yeah, so it's like when tasks are too big? Yeah, I think at that point we kind of hope that the project managers made small enough tasks that weren't okay. overwhelming. And okay. They know the area that they're creating them in. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Another reason we keep the high thresholds, like we don't want to be adding any junk to the map. So like, yes, we could be predicting like paths and footway, like very small things like that, but um, to some point like, that just becomes, so that means they'll be incorrect, and we wanted it so that a beginner mapper could come in, we want to keep that high threshold, okay. like Chris said. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, Zach. Thank you, thank Christopher. Yeah. Oh, there's awesome. another question. All right, we're good. Well, thanks, everybody, yeah. for uh, turning around and checking this out. If you have more questions, we're, happy, we're yeah. here to answer. And um, <coughs> if there are project managers who wanted to get set up on this or have some other thing, we would like to help you out. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Yeah.